Hey, what's up? It's John Samuel and welcome back to All Access. I know we've been out of touch for a while, but we are back with a double packed edition of the show today because we have Sarah Clark and Natasha Brzezinski, who are the designers for this year's Drip My Cane campaign. And I can't be more excited to have them on. So what's up, y'all? Hey, John. <laughs> How are you guys? Good. I'm good. Excited to be here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm super excited about this because Drip My Cane is something that I am just so, you know, passionate about and excited about. And this year we went in a different direction rather than having a contest where we had designers from all over the world. We actually had y'all do it. So Sarah, can you kind of talk through uh, what Drip My Cane 3.0, kind of the direction we went this time? Yeah, so this year, so instead of having the designs being outsourced, we did them in-house this year. And we figured we would highlight, um, we chose four different partners of Abler, um, you know, folks that we've been partnering with for a while and that have been really supportive of us and vice versa. Um, and we figured it'd be really fun this time just to kind of make like bespoke designs featuring these, um, these four companies. Um, so that's kind of the direction we went this year, um, just to kind of switch it up and, um, yeah, just try something new. And I think it worked out really well and we're getting the, the votes in, um, now, and I think we're up to like 30 plus votes, um, which is exciting after just launching it yesterday. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited to see, uh, what design gets picked. Awesome. And so, you know, we have Natasha here. And so Natasha, I mean, who are you? Like, where did you come from? Um, so my name is Natasha, obviously. Um, I know Sarah. We went to school together, went to college together. And um, she reached out to me, I don't know, last month um, about so. helping um, John with his book launch and just doing some social media and marketing stuff. And then, um, we, uh, he asked me to help collaborate and design for these, um, cane designs. And so Sarah and I just kind of, you know, brainstormed a little bit and we both picked two to, um, work on and I don't know, just had fun with it. It was really cool to like learn about these partners. Cause you know, I'm like new to, the abler yeah. uh, scene and and all that kind of stuff so it's really it's really fun to learn about all of these really amazing um companies and organizations yeah no i'm so thankful to have you in our our ecosystem now i mean you like you said you just joined a month ago to help me with the book launch and and you know you came in you jumped in head first or feet first, whatever you call it. And you've been, you hit the ground running and, you know, it's been awesome. And so, but Natasha, you, you have a background in design slash art, right? Like what's your. Background? Yeah. So I, um, I mean, I've always been an artist. I've always um, been interested in, in things like drawing and painting. It's my, been my background for a long time, but I, I also majored in studio art when I was at Chapel Hill and um I currently work at Poland Art Center, which is um, a community art center here in Raleigh that is part of the city Parks and Rec. And I, so I work the front desk, but I also have taught some classes and I um, work in the studios. I've been helping out in like ceramics and jewelry, which has been an interesting um, thing to kind of explore other things. But yeah, I've, I'm definitely, I consider myself an artist. Um, yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's awesome. And Sarah, you know, you are, I mean, you went to journalism school, but you have this background also in graphic design because you've done, you created right. my logo, you've done <laughs> so many different things. And like, kind of what has, you know, kind of you working on graphic design, what is this kind of your background into this in time? Yeah. I mean, like I, you, you pretty much nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, in the journalism school, the husband journalism school, um, at UNC Chapel Hill, there's a lot of different branches that you could follow. And I, you know, this was kind of when I, I didn't really know what I wanted to major in yet. So I was really just trying a sampling of different classes. Um, but a big focus at the journalism school is, you know, ad and PR, but then also within that graphic design and like kind of brand design. Um, 
figuring out how to market your brand um, and the different steps behind it. So that's kind of where I got my knowledge of graphic design, the basic design principles. Um, and I got really interested in it and it was really, really fun. And it kind of, it definitely did help with this uh, drip my cane this year um, in terms of, you know, brainstorming best practices and, you know, it, it helped me get started for sure. Awesome. So we split them up into two, you know, two groups. Yep. I mean, Sarah, you had two, Natasha, you had two. So Sarah, why don't we start with the one of your first designs and Natasha, you go into one of your designs and we'll go to the Sarah back to you, Sarah, to talk about the other design and cool. Well, yes. yeah, cool. So Sarah, let's jump in the first one. Yeah. So the first one is for me, um, I got started right away with three, two, one coffee. Um, I'm a big coffee drinker. Um, I think it, mm -hmm. it, a defining part of my personality, um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, the way I kind of started was a lot of times with my designs, I, I go with word association, kind of like these word games in my head of like, okay, when I think about this brand, what else do I think of? Yeah. Um, and of course with three to one coffee, the first thing I think of is coffee. <laughs> um, and then, okay, from coffee, I think of coffee beans and the production. Um, yeah. And so really I wanted to keep it somewhat, somewhat basic, but still look nice. Um, but because of, you know, the dimensions of a cane is two inches by 30 inches, you need it to be a repeating design. It's, you know, the cane itself is pretty, it's pretty thin. Yeah. It's a slender piece. Um, so thinking of something that would stand out, but not be too boring, but also not be too complex. Um, and then also keeping in mind that we want to use this black and white design again, because we yes. want the white to be the retroflective piece. Um, so keeping those things in mind, figuring out, okay, well, this is a high contrast piece. What will look good, um, you know, with all of these different elements. And so I settled on, you know, I found a, this coffee bean design um, and have it like kind of scattering because a lot of times when I think of coffee beans and then when we went to that packing, um, you know, we packed a couple of bags at three, two, one, yeah. watching that and, you know, watching the coffee beans kind of fall into the bags was my source of inspiration. Um, so I put together this design that looks like coffee beans just kind of scattered or falling across or down the cane. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty excited. And I also think it kind of resembles leopard print almost. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Which because of just the way the beans are designed and I think it could look really cool um, on a white cane. And so the piece that would be retro reflective is the bean itself. The bean is the white piece um, on the black background. Uh, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty jazzed about it. I think it could look really cool. Um, and, you know, something else we've talked about a lot um, is, you know, with the purpose of Drip My Cane is, you know, your disability doesn't necessarily define you. Of course, it's a piece of you if you want it to be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as I identify as a coffee lover, I'm sure many other folks do as well, even if they have a disability or not. Yeah. So I think, having a coffee bean design for a cane could be really cool for those other coffee lovers out there that do use a white cane. What'd you start off with? Um, so I, the first one that I did was the E1. Um, so I, I mean, I think this is, yeah, people don't know. The E1 yeah, so they, yeah, yeah, they are a company that makes these watches that are like, a, it's a very tactile um, way to like tell time. And, um, I, I think these are so cool. Like I was really <laughs> excited about this one. Um, so, I, but I was like, cause I, I was playing around with like, okay, you know, whenever you're designing something for a specific company, I definitely like to take, to take into account like logos and, and like common, like visual themes that they have. Yeah. But with this, I was like, I don't know. I think this watch face, like their product itself is so interesting to me that I was like, I wanted to kind of go with that. So I kind of just made my like own version. I mean, it's very similar to the actual um, watch, but I kind of tried to simplify it a little bit that I kind of just went with that um, design that it's very simple. Um, watch it doesn't have any numbers or anything, but it's usually when you look at something like that, when it has like that same number of like, you know, you can tell when it's, a watch because it has a certain number of like ticks and stuff like that. But um, 
Yeah, so I don't like know. The, the, you're talking about like the raised uh, um, Yeah, so markers. like it has Amazing. a line for like each. The tactile. Uh, yes, the tactile pieces. markers. Gotcha, yes. yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was like, I, I kind of like that it's somewhat recognizable as a watch face, but it's not like you're gonna meet, like maybe someone would be like, is that a watch face? Like, I don't know for sure. And like, it could also like someone of, of a conversation cause you're like, it looks familiar but it's somewhat simplified that you're not entirely sure, which I thought was kind of cool to- Cool. So what did you use the, how did you use color? Like the, did you use black and white too? So yeah, I did black and white as well. Um, so I did, so for the the actual like watch part is what's white. So that that's the um, like retroflective part. And I, I think it's really cool. I think I liked the idea that we both were like, we're keeping it black and white. Cause I think it, it makes it really um, stand out and you're focusing on mm -hmm. the actual like subject matter. Um, yeah. Rather than. I don't know, a bunch of other distractions. These canes. And so uh, we'll make the canes, we'll get them out there. And uh, I think it's just gonna be awesome to have uh, even just raise more awareness. So I can't thank you guys enough for, you know, to really making this happen. You know, each year we're, we're evolving and uh, I'm glad we're bringing in partners into this because uh, it's, it's awesome. We're highlighting partners. And, uh, and raising awareness for the great work they're doing, raising awareness for, you know, the white cane itself. And uh, thank you both for helping to bring this this whole dream and uh, together this year. So, of course, it was fun. Absolutely. Awesome. And uh, well, thank you both. Thank you, Annie, of course, for making this happen. And I uh, want to thank everyone for tuning in and please go out and vote. And uh, we'll see you next time.